Welcome to another physics video. Today's topic is wave interference. To interfere means to get in the way of something. In order for waves to interfere, there must be at least two waves arriving at the same place at the same time. Suppose two wave pulses are traveling towards each other on a string. The diagram shows the situation. We can describe the wave pulses by their amplitudes. The blue pulse has an amplitude of two units and the red pulse, an amplitude of one unit. What will happen when the two pulses overlap? Each pulse is trying to move the string outward, so if they both occupy the same place on the string it will go up even higher. When the wave pulses overlap, they combine to make a new pulse, shown in green in the diagram. To find the new amplitude, add the amplitude of the red pulse and the amplitude of the blue pulse. In this case, the new amplitude is 3 units, 2 units from the blue pulse added to 1 unit from the red. Now suppose that the two pulses are moving towards each other but one pushes the string up and the other pushes the string down, as in the diagram. What will happen in the situation when the two waves interfere, or overlap? This time the blue pulse pushes up two units while the red pulse pushes down one unit, so I think it will still go up, but only one unit. You are exactly right. The new wave pulse, shown in green, is one unit tall. Remember that wave amplitudes represent the displacement of particles, and displacement is a vector quantity. So, like we've done before, we will make upward displacements positive and downward displacements will be negative. That is why the amplitude of the red pulse is shown as negative one unit in the diagram. When the two waves both push in the same direction we add the amplitudes to find the new wave amplitude. And, when the two waves push in opposite directions we still, add, the amplitudes as if they were vectors. This rule, to find the new amplitude you add the vector amplitudes of the interfering waves, is called the principle of superposition. Any time that waves interfere we can use the principle of superposition to find the amplitude of the new wave formed. When the principle of superposition gives us a new amplitude that is larger than what we started with, we call the situation constructive interference. But, when the interfering amplitudes combine to make a shorter wave, we call it destructive interference. Now, let's suppose that we have two waves on a single string. One wave, the blue one, will travel to the left, and one wave, the red one, will travel to the right. Now let's add the sum of these two waves. The green wave shows what we would see on the string as the blue and red waves interfere. Now let's see what will happen as the two waves continue to travel. Now, let's watch again. This time pay attention to the black dot in the center of the green wave. Does it ever move? The point in the green wave represented by the black dot never moves. The blue and red waves always cancel each other at that point. Now watch the two peaks on the green wave. Pay attention to the left peak. Does the point on the wave with maximum displacement travel sideways? or straight up and down? The peaks travel up and down on the green wave. Because we can't see them moving left or right, this kind of interference is called a standing wave. The points with no displacement in a standing wave are called nodes. This wave has three nodes. The points in a standing wave with maximum displacement are called antinodes. This wave has two antinodes. Let's summarize. To make a standing wave we need two identical waves traveling in opposite directions. The two waves should fit exactly on the string. When they interfere they will produce a pattern that does not travel left or right but only shows motion up and down. The points on the standing wave that travel the greatest amount are called antinodes. 
The points that don't move at all are called nodes. Antinodes are examples of constructive interference. And nodes are examples of destructive interference.